Well, if you haven't guessed, today is strawberry day. I want to freeze dry some strawberries and I thought I'd bring you along. Freeze dried strawberries are delicious. I don't know which I like better, fresh or freeze dried. Both are very good. Both different consistencies as we know with freeze dried food. There's sort of an odd styrofoamy thing about it and I don't know why but I just really like the crunch from things you don't expect to crunch. In this case, strawberries. Um, I have big plans someday that our garden will yield all the strawberries we could ever possibly stand, but we were far away from that moment in time. So we just saw that at a big box store that there were some strawberries on sale. They looked good, so we grabbed them. I'm just getting them washed off and starting the preparation. Strawberries are, are simple. Um, I use a mandolin to get even cuts. One of the most important things that you need to do with a freeze dryer is get your cuts even. If you have thick and thin and all different kinds of things, your machine's not going to perform as well. It, it, it can't decipher. It just knows it needs to dry until everything is done. It will sense the majority of things being dry, but if you have some thicker items and you feel in the middle, they'll probably be cold. If they're a lot thicker than everything else, you have to run it again, which I don't enjoy doing. I have had to do, but I don't love doing it. So <clears throat> I like to use a mandolin for certain things. In this case, uh, the strawberries. I'm gonna start with a, uh, a very thin blade and see if I like that, that cut, that size. So let's see what we think of the very thin blade. Oh, this strawberry is a little bit, a little bit ripe. Um, well, they're not kidding. That's like paper thin. So that's a little too thin for me. I, I don't want that. I'll, I'll, I'll put, you know what? I'm not going to put that there. I'm just going to give that to the pigs. That's just far too thin. So let, let's try something that's not as, as fine as that. <clears throat> let's try, what does this say? Medium. I guess that makes sense. Let's try medium and see what we think. I'm going to try a strawberry that's got a little bit more consistency to it. And let's see what we get with medium. Now it's not, a, in this case, uh, okay. I would say I really like medium here. Let's see if you can see medium. Uh, just for the heck of it, let's see what thick gives us. Out of curiosity, why not? Well, that is very nice as well, but I think I'm gonna go with the medium. So I'm gonna start taking these here. And as you can see, I'm placing them in a single file, so to speak. Um, some people stack. I haven't done that yet. Um, I don't know if it's something I'm always gonna do because many of you know I'm sort of a stickler for the process. I don't want to do anything that voids the warranty. I don't want to do anything that Harvest Right has said you really shouldn't do. And while I'm not a rule follower, this was a major investment and I want to treat it accordingly. Um, <clears throat> so what I did do, because I couldn't find any place where they said not to stack, so to speak, I, I bought something and I'll, I'll share it with you when it comes in. Some people use parchment paper. You know, I love parchment paper. Um, but I didn't want to keep using parchment paper because I don't like to keep wasting my money throwing things away. So I bought the silicone, almost like netting food grade. Uh, it looks like a screen and I'm going to cut it to size. And then for something like this, this is so thin, as you can see, it, it doesn't come up to the top because you don't want anything sticking up over the top. So if I put the netting on here and run another layer on, I want to do a test and see, does that work? The air gets through, does everything dry? So we'll do that together, but those haven't come in right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue slicing these. Then I'm going to do as I always do. I'm going to pre-freeze and then we'll run them and I'll let you know how long it took me. We'll do a little taste test and then we'll do a little reconstitution to see how long does it take to get a strawberry back to a strawberry. Does it indeed turn back into a strawberry? And what are some of the other things that we can do with them uh, other than just use them as uh, a crunchy, yummy chip? <laughs> so we'll see in a little bit once everything has frozen and we're ready to go.
don't forget when you're doing your strawberries to note it in your book so you know how long it's going to take you. Okay, here we go. I'm shouting. We're going to shut the machine off, but first we're going to look and see what this message is. So I added a little extra time, quite honestly, I just wasn't ready to film yet, and I wanted to film opening this, and I also had not been running the air conditioner because, well, it's expensive to run the air conditioner. So this is the first time I have ever seen warm room temperature batch processing uh, time may be longer. That was kind of interesting. Um, as I said, this had already stopped running its cycle, saying everything was ready. I just wasn't ready to film. Uh, but the machine knows everything, doesn't it? It knew the room was a little warm, even though I, I do have the, the windows open, both windows, even the one behind. Um, so um, it's pretty intelligent, I think. Well, it's nice to know the machine knows more than I do. It's correct, the room is warm. I kind of held back on air conditioning because it was comfortable for us. But perhaps now I know at night, run some air. I'm going to go ahead and shut it off. I'm going to release the valve to release the pressure so I can open the door. So when you turn it off, the pump stops. You hear the sound of the air releasing from, from the unit. You just watch and make sure that your impression here from the gasket loosens. And now we're going to check and look for doneness. Woo! Those trays are warm. Doesn't that look great? It is incredible how a freeze dryer, I think we're fine. I'm going to hit no defrost. I'm going to show you the cheater way that I do it. Trying to save a little electricity and trying not to have the machine keep working, 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 working. So I'll do that in just a second. It is amazing how freeze drying, for those of you who haven't tasted freeze dried food, bring, it brings out the flavor in the food. It is incredible how a strawberry tastes so much more strawberry when you have it freeze dried, it's quite something. I'm gonna bring this over to you so you can take a look at it. But it's not just the strawberry flavor that you're getting. These particular strawberries have a little bit of a tartness to them, which I find to be fun. I'm not a sweets person. I like things that are a little bit, I don't know, fun on the tongue, uh, tart or bitter or hot or what have you. But here's our cut. What I did was I got smart here. Listen to this. it one more time so you can hear it. It's like a potato chip, <laughs> but guilt-free, no oil. So what I did that was different from what I showed you on screen was I switched the way I did the strawberries. I was just taking them and kind of running down the mandolin, not really thinking because I was doing a, a video for you guys and not having a thought about how I was cutting strawberries other than making sure that they were the same thickness. So I was taking the bottom of the strawberry, holding the green top, and going to the mandolin. Then I got smart, and my grandma always taught me, you take the green out, and then you cut your strawberries. So I took the green out, flipped it the other way, held the smaller part on the bottom, did that, so I got the bigger parts, and the small parts I was throwing into a bowl. I macerated that with a little bit of, I like to use orange juice concentrate, just like a tablespoon in when I macerate um, strawberries. Macerate just means you add a little bit of sugar, to draw out the water in the non-freeze dried strawberries and then a little flavoring. Uh, sometimes I add a little bit of almond extract. Uh, I definitely almost always use orange juice concentrate. Let that kind of meld together in the fridge and then I made homemade whipped cream and we had that for dinner that night so nothing goes to waste. The green tops go into compost. So let me get back here. Now we've had our sound crunch and all that. Um, I'll be packing these in smaller bags. Uh, these are more, uh, I like to use these with cooking, so these are, these are really just treats for us. 
And the smaller bag and the 300 cc oxygen absorber is what I would use. And, and if we have time, I'll go ahead and show you how, how I seal everything. But I kind of wanted to talk about uses for these. Um, in this form, you could do, I mean, just eat them like this. I mean, why not? We're going to try to do a little reconstitution in a minute to bring them back to the flavor that we need. But what if you just took them and broke them up over ice cream? Or even better, what if you made your own homemade ice cream mix and crumbled some of these in? In that, that liquid mix, they're bound to reconstitute. And even if they don't, I think the flavor profile would be amazing. So you could do that. One of the things I'm really looking forward to doing is using my grinder and making a powder. I think strawberry powder, I think the sky's the limit. You could use it in a frosting to make strawberry frosting. You could use it in whipped cream. How delicious, a strawberry whipped cream. Um, how about like in a cake when you're making a cake batter, have that strawberry frosting and, and cake batter. You talk about having a flavor of strawberry. Or what about powdering it and putting it in milk? Remember the old strawberry milk when you were a kid? Uh, my granddaughter loves that. Or smoothies. Just throw this into your smoothies. That would be delicious. Um, my other thought is if it's powdered, what about putting it in your waffle or pancake mix? Wouldn't that be delicious? Muffins. Mr. Blue Jeans and I mostly in the mornings eat oatmeal because my instant pot I can set at night and have it ready in the morning with, well, we do steel cut oats. But how about, it doesn't even have to be powdered. You could just crumble up some of these on top of your oatmeal. How delicious. A little bit of honey drizzled on top. Speaking of which, honey and, and uh, freeze-dried strawberries. What about on yogurt? So I think the sky is the limit. I think one of the coolest things you can do with this in making it a powder, and that would be any of your freeze-dried fruits, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, whatever. What about homemade Jello instead of the stuff from the store? Because you know this is gonna be raspberries or whatever fruit that you've done. It's really gonna be that fruit. You powder it, you add some glycerin, you use um, glycerin. Did I say glycerin? <laughs> no, gelatin. I'm thinking tinctures. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need a strawberry tincture. So you would powder your strawberries. You would use some gelatin and some apple juice for added flavor as your liquid. And voila, you have homemade jello. Less expensive. You can add whatever sugar you do or don't want to add. Play with it. I don't know. I'm thinking I'll probably do some sort of recipe down the road on making a uh, powdered fruits and let's try the homemade jello, especially in some molds, that would be fun. Uh, so I think those are just a few of the things you could do with, with powdered fruits. Let me know if there's anything else, something I've missed, I'm sure I have, that you all do with your freeze dried fruits. Um, so I was going to get to defrosting. I've said before that when I defrost my unit, I don't run the defroster on the harvest right just making sure everything's good. I don't run the defroster on the harvest right. I just don't want to keep the machine running. It's been working hard. It told me it was hot today. <laughs> so I don't want to run it anymore. So here's what I do. I take my little fan that I have down here that I'm using for my uh, oil, keeping my oil pump cool while the process is going. I come over here. Actually, I shut my unit off first. I come over here, I set it up over on the washer, I unplug the unit, I plug my fan, you can't see all this, I plug my fan in over there, I turn my unit, because it's on wheels, if you didn't see, I'll post it here, how to assemble a freeze dryer cart. I got a really awesome cart with wheels, just so I could do this kind of thing. So then I pull off my gasket, because remember, I don't leave my gasket on it, I always take it off and clean it, and you can see, let me bring this around to you and show you why. And I clean it after every time. Can you sort of see bits and pieces of stuff on here? Happens every time. That's why I clean it. I just want to make sure everything's right and it runs right. So, what I'm going to do, I just cleaned the shelves, so I won't do that this time, but I will clean the gasket. Run the fan facing here. Then, in order to get the water out, because Harvest Right didn't think about the water having to go out. There's a hole in the back at the bottom of the barrel here. You'll see on, on the, the, the barrel here, I'm calling it a barrel. I don't know what, you're, what it's called. 
there's a hole in the back. Obviously the ice in here has to defrost and go out. The unit doesn't tip. They don't have any kind of feet that adjust. It's not built with a little angle. So I went and purchased this. It's called Rhino Tough. And it goes underneath the unit and you hand pump it up. And believe it or not, this little unit will lift 300 pounds. So what I'm doing is just pumping up the unit a little bit, lifting it. Did you hear that? Now, I'll drain out the back. When I'm done, I just twist here. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't twist I squeeze. You hear the air come out? Now I gotta pump it up again. Um, it was well worth the purchase. I got a pack of three different sizes. I know I'll end up finding something else to do with it because I'm a crafty person. I like to do crafts. And so I'm sure this will come in handy for something. But being able to know that I'm draining all of the water out, I'll have the link below for this too. Being able to drain all the water out and knowing that that got taken care of and it's dry, it all matters to me. I do not want to have a problem. They even give you this, a couple of little tools to lift something if it's a little hard that, or you want uh, to make an adjustment or something. So that's Rhino Strong, love it. And you notice one other thing about it? You hear the ice popping? There's no, the power is my hand. That's it. There, there's no electric. All right, so let's just pop these in here as a refresher. We're just gonna do one little package here. If I can get all of them in, and I mean only because um, <laughs> I'd rather be eating them. <laughs> so what else do we have coming up? I've got some fresh basil that I've been harvesting from the garden. I don't think I have enough to do an entire run, so I may do my basil along with the fresh celery from the garden. And we're gonna look at reconstituting that as well. So let's package this. Let, let me throw it everywhere first. <laughs> All right. Okay, packaged. Now, these happen to be the kind that you can just seal. So if you think you're gonna be using it in, in a short amount of time, you can just seal it and put it in your cupboard. In my case, I'm not gonna be using this particular package, so. I'm going to go ahead and put in, did you hear the seal on that? It's because I use my vacuum over here. I don't let the oxygen absorbers do the work because I want them to do the work in the bag. I don't want them to do the work in here. So I'll show you that in a second. I throw in one, I close this up really quick, just temporarily. I zip this up really quick, pushing out some air. I'm all about giving a person a hand. I guess that's why I'm on YouTube, hoping I can give people a hand with something that they were not sure about. I have a girlfriend who's new to pressure canning, and I remember when I was going, I need to do it, but I'm afraid. I need to do it, but I'm afraid. And so she's been coming to me for help, and it feels good to be able to help, doesn't it? It really does. So what I do here is put that on this unit. One of the tricks, if you have a food saver with the vacuum pack, on it, and I'll link that below as well. Put another loose lid inside, even though you have a lid here. It helps immensely with your success of getting it to vacuum seal. I don't know why, but it does, and it saves you time. So, let's turn this on. It's gonna be loud, give me one second. Lid is on, oxygen absorbers are saved from having to work too hard. I like to give them a vacation. Our bag is done here, except for me writing on it, because whenever I do this for, for all of you, I forget to write, but that's no big deal. I know it's strawberries. Let's get to reconstituting. I'm curious myself, because mostly I've been bagging and, and storing. So what we're gonna start doing is with what I make here, we're going to see what it means to us to reconstitute the product that we made. So let's do that next. All right, I hope the fan over there is not making too much noise. I'm defrosting because I want to do another run later today. Uh, so I chose three strawberries for each bowl. Each bowl is the same size. Each bowl has a quarter cup of filtered water. Um, so let's go ahead and we're going to put them in for two minutes, five minutes, seven minutes, and we will see what happens.
All right, we're at 30 seconds right now, and we've already got, we're done. 30 seconds. I think um, seven minutes would be crazy, so I'm just taking these guys out now and adding them all in here. That was a very quick test, because now the seven minute one is starting to fall apart. This one's starting to fall apart. So for sliced strawberries, you are looking at, I did not think to bring a strainer, about 30 seconds to get them back to strawberry. And honestly, it feels no different than if you had sliced it. Remember, I sliced these kind of thin. I think next time I will go with the thick that I had mentioned I wasn't gonna use. The seeds are still crunching. I still think I like freeze dried better. <laughs> but, I'm gonna show you, completely reconstituted, 30 seconds. Let me stop my timer. It'll probably beat right when I'm ready to say something that might be important. Or not. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Kind of hard to hold up a reconstituted strawberry, but I think you get the idea. It has the same feel. If somebody put a bowl of fresh cut strawberries and reconstituted strawberries, the only thing I would think is when they washed the particular strawberries here, and this is probably because I didn't have a way to strain them, they didn't get enough water off because they were a little watery. And that's because I didn't have a strainer. You can still see the water in the bowl here. Um, delicious. It would make, uh, like, like I said, I just like to put strawberries with a little sugar, orange juice concentrate, and some homemade whipped cream on top. This would do the trick. So. That was fast. <laughs> Were you expecting that? I wasn't expecting that. Um, and I kind of want to do this with a few, a few of the things. I may not always have the opportunity, but I, I would like to do this because I think one of the bigger mysteries as you start to get into freeze drying is, okay, that's great. I got it down. I know how I want to handle my machine. I know what I'm willing to do or not do. Uh, but there's not a whole lot on um, the knowingness of uh, reconstituting this or rehydrating it. Uh, so I kind of want to play with that and see how that works. So as we go along, we'll be looking at bananas, herbs, different things, how well they do or don't reconstitute. I mean, who wants to reconstitute an ice cream sandwich? Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, besides, I also love those freeze dried. If you haven't had one, oh my gosh. There are some dessert treats that I want to make. You would not reconstitute those. You would eat them like that. The point is the crunch from being freeze dried. So there's some things you're just not going to, but soup mixes, potatoes, you know, mashed, what have you. Uh, I'm trying to do a lot of leftovers on trays and bag them for later. I usually make a lot of refried beans. I, I love to make homemade refried beans in my Instant Pot and I've been uh, freeze drying those and putting them in packets. Let's reconstitute those. So you get the idea of what I'm saying. If it can be, and should be reconstituted. I want to play around with that and learn. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to be doing a lot more freeze drying videos because I really am enjoying this process and just want to share them with you. I hope uh, if you look, if you're looking for a freeze dryer, that you would click my affiliate link below. If you if you go to buy, I get a, a few pennies from from that, and it helps here with the farm animals. Every dime goes for the animals. Um, and let me know in the comments what you've done with your freeze drying if you are doing freeze drying right now. There's just so much to learn and uh, that's one of the things I love best about the YouTube community is that we pull together and we learn and we help each other. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't, please subscribe. This is Nikki D from Five Dog Farm. I'm going to go eat some freeze dried strawberries. <laughs>